Dear friends, as our peace gong calls us into our worship time together, let us gather ourselves into the presence of our life-giving and loving God. You are all invited to prepare for communion later in our worship and have your own bread and cup ready, as well as a candle to light now as we prepare our hearts and our minds to be together in virtual worship, connected in community with God and one another. Let us sing together, come let us join with faithful souls. Let us pray together. Life-giving God, greatly to be praised, wiser than despair, refuge and strength, tender and just, healing and forgiving, guiding and blessing, we come into this present moment bringing all that we are and all that we yearn to be. Forgive, we pray, all of our sins and separations, for we have done that which we ought not to have done, and left undone that which we should have done. Empower us to hold fast to that which is good, and to your glory, holy and eternal mystery, we lift our songs and stories, praise and prayers, tears and joys, from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Friends, we have the assurance of faith that nothing can ever separate us from the love of God made known to us in Jesus Christ. We are forgiven, and so we are empowered to sing, Amen, we praise your name, O God. Kristen Putney will now share today's scripture, following which she will offer the message. From the Hebrew Testament, Malachi, are we not all children of the same creator? Are we not all created by the same God? And from Psalm 133, how wonderful and pleasant it is when brothers and sisters live together in harmony. From the New Testament, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 12, the Golden Rule. So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you, for this sums up the law and the prophets. And from Colossians, bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you, and over all these virtues, 
Put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. How big is your family? Before you answer this question, consider who shall you include? Perhaps your children have grown and they have families. Did you count all of these members in this answer? Maybe you have parents or grandparents that are living with you. Did you count all of them? Maybe you would also add your in-laws, siblings and their families, your cousins, aunts, and uncles. Now when I ask you how big is your family, your number may have just increased. Many of us would want to include our church family. Now we all potentially have an even bigger circle of family than we thought. Let's also think about the fact that our church was once part of the historic Rhode Island Conference, but in January this year, we merged with Connecticut and Massachusetts and formed the new conference, the Southern New England Conference. Yep, our church family has just tripled. May we continue to comprehend that our new conference is just a small part of the wider church of the United Church of Christ. Our family circle is extremely wide, isn't it? As we begin to answer the question of how big is our family, and we realize our family circle extends beyond our church, our town, our state, and because we know that the Bible says we are all God's children, we all could say that we are one family under God. I like the sounds of that. Do you? As a church educator, I love my job nurturing children and families. I always imagined having a large family, but that was not exactly how it happened. Many of you know I had challenges in having a bigger family after my son passed away with a genetic disease. I am thankful I was blessed with two children though, and I have realized over the years, I do have just what I had hoped for. I wanted many children in my family, and that is just what I have, many children to care for in my church family. Since the pandemic began in March, I have been taping a weekly virtual church school to nurture all of the children in our church family. I also work for the Southern New England Conference as their resource consultant for faith formation, in which I support many local church educators with resources and information on relevant topics. Recently, the Southern New England Conference staff has been focusing on working towards anti-racism, and we are making efforts to learn more about black culture and black history. This is crucial in doing the challenging work to eradicate racism. In turn, I have been sharing this information with other church educators, and I am encouraging families to have conversations on racism with their children. How to talk to kids on race. Good question. It is said that it is never too early to talk about racism with children. So, how do you talk about race? Do you? Especially these days with racial justice awareness heightened? Yes, it is uncomfortable and unfamiliar sometimes, but realize it is necessary to do in order to change and grow into a new mindset of living out the love and justice as a disciple of Jesus. The Southern New England Conference website has extensive racial justice awareness pages of articles, resources, and videos to utilize. Here now is one short video by Jamaa Tibsby on how to talk about race to children, to grandchildren, or to any child you may be spending some time with. Race is one of those touchy subjects you don't really want to get into because you're afraid you might mess up. But the fact is that as early as three years old, children are classifying people based on their appearances. And so the worst conversation adults can have with kids about race is no conversation at all. Talking to kids about race needs to happen early, often, and honestly. Saying honestly, yeah, people are different, cultures are different, but that's a good thing. How boring would it be to have a, a crayon box that all had the same color? There are so many ways to approach racial conversations. You can use Dr. Seuss books, you can use any sort of pop culture reference. There are many, many movies 
animated movies especially that form a good entryway. So it's helpful, especially as a parent, to watch the movie beforehand maybe or read a plot summary and say, well, what's happening here? Or look at all the other princesses. What do you notice about them? Do you think anyone can be a princess? Do they have to have a certain skin color or look a certain way? And it's usually good to sort of stop along the way, pause two or three times strategically and bring up this conversation. Kids, just like adults, don't just respond to words. So this isn't just quote unquote talking to your kids about race. This is actually experiential learning that we need to do. I remember taking a class to the Lorraine Motel where Dr. King was assassinated. And when young people see that, that impacts them. And then we can use that experience, that hands-on visceral encounter with race and racism to have a much more substantive conversation and it feels different and you can do that in your own local city there are historical markers those signs you pass all the time and never read stop and read them one day see what they say see what happened there see if you recognize the names or if you don't go and look them up utilize all the resources around you and make sure that you're not just talking to your kids about race and diversity and justice, but you're showing them why it's important. Racism is detrimental to the entire society, no matter if you're black or white, Latino, Asian, native, whomever. Everyone is impacted, and that's why we need to raise a generation of people that's gonna turn around and try to change that momentum toward the tide of anti-racism and racial justice. I find this video very helpful for parents to understand why it is important to recognize the relevance of talking about race and cultures with the children because it will develop the movement towards anti-racism in the next generation. Jamar Tibsey points out the worst conversation adults can have with kids about race is no conversation at all. He strongly urges all of us to talk to kids about race early, often, and honestly. This is one of the many informative videos available online to share and learn from. It can start with an awareness of little things. Ten years ago, I had a new family come to the church, and their little girls were in the preschool room. As soon as they came into the space, I instantly became aware of the fact that our church school dolls were all white-skinned and we did not have any dolls with brown or black skin tones. We had no baby dolls that looked like them. I immediately bought new baby dolls with brown skin and a set of figurines that represented 12 different cultures. I also bought a puppet set of children with different skin tones. A few years ago, many of us took a white privilege Lenten workshop offered here at the church, and one of the tasks was to assess our images of Jesus in the church. Were these images of Jesus authentic with Middle Eastern darkened tone skin and dark eyes, or were they images of Jesus with white skin and light eyes? What do you think I found? Many years ago, browsing through a book display at the annual New England Association of Church Educators event in Craigville, Massachusetts, I found an image of Jesus on a greeting card. It took my breath away. Jane McKenzie, a New York artist living in Vermont, created the painting in 1999. She named it Jesus of the People. In her painting, Jesus is depicted dark and was painted from a woman model. This inclusive image of Jesus pays homage to people of color and women, two groups traditionally underrepresented or left out of iconic imagery of Christ. Revealed for the first time on the Today Show in New York in, the, in early 2000, the reactions of the painting were harsh and viciously negative. The artist even received death threats. But over time, people stood up for the work, and now they outnumber those who rejected it. Jesus of the people, 20 years later, is now embraced as a true icon of this era. Artist McKenzie proudly states, this was a Jesus for the dark continents, the dark spaces in society, the darkness in our lives. This Jesus was definitely one with the poor, the outcasts, the marginalized, and women. I refer to this picture often in my children's message in church school. 
I invite you to look this up on the internet. Again, it is called Jesus of the People. The artist is Janet McKenzie. There are many opportunities to talk about race with your children, your grandchildren, your nieces, your nephews. You can talk with them while you're reading books. You can talk to them when you watch videos together. Today's storybooks and movies are making efforts to have diversity represented. No longer do we see the typical main Caucasian characters of the past. Can you think of some? Yep, Cinderella, Snow White, Belle, Ariel. There have been non-white princesses over the years, Jasmine, Pocahontas, Mulan, Moana. But in 2009, Disney introduced their first black princess, Tiana, in the movie Princess and the Frog. Over the years, United Church of Christ has worked hard educating and advocating for equality for many groups. Why? Because they believe we are one family under God. Today we'll, we will be hearing a special song sung by Haley Salguero that envisions this one family and it is known as the Global Peace Festival song called One Family Under God. Haley reiterates the Hebrew scripture in Malachi, singing that we all come from one creator. The lyrics have imagery of spreading seeds of love and peace, and it reminds me of our teaching ministry here in our church. The church school children are nurtured in faith, knowing we are all one big family. They learn in the early grades the golden rule, and know in everything to do to others what you would have them do to you. The song continues and says we must live for others, forgive, and understand one another. Most importantly, Haley sings that love has no boundaries regardless of race and religion, and this is where peace begins. We are the Seekonk Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, we follow three main statements of the United Church of Christ. Do you know them? The first is the purpose statement from the Gospel of Matthew. This is very familiar to all of you. To love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and our neighbor as ourselves. The second is the vision statement. It is simply said, united in Christ's love, a just world for all. The third is the mission statement. United in spirit and inspired by God's grace, we welcome all, love all, and seek justice for all. May we all strive to support these statements as a church family. Reverend Joy and Reverend Marilyn entwine them in our weekly worship, and it is the foundation of all that we do here as a congregation. Faith formation in church school even as a virtual experience, emphasizes all of these statements because we teach we are one family under God. At the end of this worship, I will be sharing photos from our Vacation Bible School Week at the Virtual Zoo, where each day our children learned more about God's love and a just world for all. I encourage all of you to take some time and wander through the UCC website, that's www.ucc.org. You will find many informative pages. May I suggest starting with the, what is the UCC about? On that page, there is a list of what we believe statements. I want to highlight several that support the scripture readings I shared today. We believe that each person is unique and valuable. Do you feel that in our church family? I hope so. We believe that all the baptized belong body and soul to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. No matter who, no matter what, no matter where we are on life's journey, notwithstanding race, gender identity or expression, sexual orientation, class or creed, we all belong to God and to one worldwide communion of faith. This statement, it invites so many people into the church. We believe the UCC is called to be a united and uniting church. Have you heard that they may all be one? Yes, that is from John 17, 21. The UCC has no rigid formulation of doctrine 
or attachment to creeds or structures. Its overarching creed is love. We believe that the UCC is called to be a prophetic church, as in the tradition of prophets and apostles. God calls the church to speak truth to power, liberate the oppressed, care for the poor, and comfort the afflicted. We are in need of all these voices, all your voices, now to make a positive change. We believe in the power of peace and work for nonviolent solutions to local, national, and international problems. Nonviolent is the key word here. But I was impacted by a quote I read recently by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in 1968 in response to the riots then. He was condemning both the riots and the intolerable conditions that existed in society. And he said, tonight, a riot is the language of the unheard. Last week, I was reading an article about how to answer a child when they ask, why does racism keep happening? The article focused on a great visual activity created by Dr. Erin Winkler, associate professor at the University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee. To help explain this layered situation, she asked the parent to take out some string and have their child wind and tie themselves up, maybe even looping the parent's hands together with their hands. Then say to the child the fact that racism and oppression and discrimination have been building for a long time and it has gotten really tangled just like the child's hands are. Dr. Winkler suggests talking with, talking with your child about how long it will take to untangle the string and how long it will take to untangle racism. She men mentions that even if one knot is taken out, there will be more left to unknot, and but together they have to keep working at it. I think this activity can be an effective way to help a young person comprehend the difficulty of unraveling this problem. During this time of the pandemic, all of us are spending more time at home. We are reading more books, watching more movies, and having conversations outside on walks and on porches. These are open opportunities to talk about the topic of race and engage in a discussion of how to be a part of change in our world. May we continue to think about how big our family really is beyond our home and church. We are a part of God's big family and it includes everyone around the world, every race, every skin color, every culture. May we do to others what we would have them do to us with equality, honesty, and respect. May we remember all come from one creator and no barrier shall keep us apart. Remember that love binds us all together in unity and we are one family under God. Amen. Let us sing our hymn response, Help Us Accept Each Other. <laughs>
Friends, we come before God in our prayers today during our sacred time of Holy Communion, and we pray for all of us to find the courage to live with hope, to share kindness, to focus on the affirmative. We give thanks for those whose life force it is to make a difference in our communities and our world, all those who are caring for others, loving and serving in Christ's name. And we pray for those who are experiencing losses in their lives, all who are grieving, all who are in need of healing. We pray for all those listed on our prayer concerns, and we pray for our country and for all of the changes that are so crucial for peace and justice in our land. And most of all, we pray that the love and peace of Christ will indeed empower us in all we say and do. Donna Ewell will now share our faith family announcements. Good morning or afternoon or evening whenever you are watching. Welcome, and we are so happy to have you with us today. We are a faith community that lives out our faith together through all that we do, and we especially want you to know that your health, safety, and staying connected are our highest priority. We continue to have an extremely very well-stocked food pantry, so please give the office a call if um, you have any needs, and someone will meet you at the office at a time that is convenient for you. And we still need your Peace Be With You videos. Please continue to send them in. Of course, I'm not going to stop asking until we get everyone to do that. We did receive a few this week, which will be shown at the end of today's service. And then we're out. So please, please help us and send in your videos. And we thank you to those that are continuing to either mail in or uh, uh, send their weekly pledges online. We are very grateful for that. And we will have a virtual coffee hour today, Sunday, at 10 a.m. Please join us on Zoom for a few minutes or for the entire hour. The login code is in my latest email. And Pat Smith will also be here today in the Fall River Avenue parking lot from 2 to 3 selling masks. She has adult and children masks available. And even if you don't need a mask, feel free to come on over and let's have some social um, social distance socializing for an hour. Um, there's a few of us that come every single week to come and keep Pat company. And the church, the hall, and the office are closed to the public until the bans are lifted. Only paid staff and other essential personnel will be allowed in the building to keep the space safe. We do appreciate and thank the 115 people that returned the surveys. There should be a notice out soon with the updates. Please know that even if we return to an in-person service, we will continue to record our services and you will be able to continue to see them on YouTube. And on Sunday, September 13th, we are going to have a very special confirmation service that was originally planned for the end of May. Please enjoy your week, be safe, Wear your mask if you go out into a restaurant or a store or an office, and I hope you are in good health and spirits. Blessings and love to all of you, and I will see you again next week. Let us all reflect as Haley sings, We Are One Family Under God.
Dear friends, in communion with those of all times and places, we come now to the table of our Lord Jesus Christ, bringing the gifts of all that we are and all that we hope to be. Let us gather our hearts in the spirit of prayer. Let us pray. In this, your presence, gracious and life-giving God, we come. Each of us from different places, some of us with fears or pain, some of us in need of your strength and courage. Yet we pray, O God, that you will be with us. Guide us. Hear the prayers that rise from the depths of our own hearts. Be with all those in the midst of suffering and loss, all in the midst of the doubts and despair. And loving God, wherever we find ourselves, fill us with the promise that you are ever-present and guide us with the power to be filled with your light of integrity and truth-telling, with your heart of compassion and the commitment to live with justice and mercy, serving in Christ's love. We ask now, O God, that you will bless the cup and the bread and each of us receiving in the holy name of Jesus Christ, who taught us when we pray together to say, Our Father, Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Dear friends, we remember on that night when Jesus was betrayed that he took the bread. He blessed it and he broke it, saying, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this always remembering me. And in the same manner also, Jesus took the cup and blessed it and said, this cup is the cup of the new covenant, which is the covenant of love. Do this also, remembering me. Ministering now in Christ's name, I invite all who live and love in that holy name to share the bread and the cup. And while you are partaking, please sing, Alleluia, Alleluia, give thanks to the risen Christ. Let us offer our thanks. Let us pray. Life-giving and loving God, we give thanks that you have nourished us at this your table, and we pray that you will continue to guide us in Christ's love through the days ahead. Amen. Friends, we go now into these days ahead to live out our faith with the power to love and the strength to serve. Amen. And let us sing our song of parting together. Now may the peace of Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit empower us all to love and to serve. Amen.
Jackson.